Live from ClickOrlando.com, News 6 Plus, and WKMG, we're getting results in your neighborhood now at 6.30 p.m. Now at 6.30, balancing history versus growth in the classroom. One local county wants you to renew a half-cent sales tax. Their sales pitch and the priorities revealed when they asked faculty and families what's needed the most. Good evening. This is News 6 at 630 getting results. Thanks for joining us here live on News 6 Plus. I'm Justin Warman. And I'm Ginger Gadsden. It was one of the top concerns when we hit the road for zip code 32771, the need for affordable housing. One day after we broadcast live from Sanford, some new affordable units have just come online. How it's getting results and why even more will be on the way soon. Plus, one of our top trending stories, you could own an island, a real tropical party place, or at least part of it. Why Beer Can Island in Tampa Bay is up for grabs, how it got its name, and who wants to get the party going again. But we do want to start with the rain and storms finally moving offshore yeah. and winding down. So the worst of it is over, but not everyone is dry just yet. We did see a tornado warning early this afternoon in one corner of Volusia County. Just north of Flagler in St. Johns County, a confirmed tornado was caught on video. Do you see it there? Uh, you can see the funnel in the, the distance. This is in the St. Augustine area. While first responders there say there are no reports of major structural damage there is some damage like fences down roofs dinged up a bit but you can see in one of these photos a play set was even toppled over the st john's fire team says that they are still in the area now during news 6 at 5 30 we showed you how today's storms even washed out a part of a1a in flagler county where crews are building two seawalls causing even more traffic trouble there. Thankfully, they were able to make those emergency repairs. And we just got some video showing that work completes. Yeah, crews were able to pack sand into the area that washed away. Believe it or not, this is the 20th time this section of A1A has washed out since 2022. So where is all that rain right now? A live look at our launch credit union port cam shows it is clearing up nicely out there. So let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells. Tom. Gone like a fast train. Rain's <laughs> getting out of here now. Everything moving to the east at better than 30 to 35 miles per hour. You see a touch of rain down here in the bottom corner of the viewing area south of Grant Vicaria, right along the county line from Mitko to Sebastian. I do still have some rain ongoing, but that's it. To the north and the west, we've dried it out totally. It's still a little blustery. Future radar takes all of this out to the open water here in the next couple of hours. If you have on the town plans tonight, currently we're at 79, but a couple of hours from now by 9 o'clock, we're at 70, 68 at midnight. I will be right back to pinpoint the overnight lows where you live, talk about the wind for your Friday, and then we're going to break out the next seven days. And believe it or not, I have one of those days with a daytime high of 90. See you in a few. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Tom. Our other top story now at 630 tonight, a potential solution for our crumbling schools. Buildings falling apart. There's water damage. They even have old electrical wiring and air conditioning. A new six investigation revealed it's so bad. Some districts say it would actually be cheaper to tear them down and start fresh. Well, in Orange County, school leaders want to know what your priorities are. New Six's Catherine Silver shows us what they're learning from a survey. We're here at Edgewater High School, built in 1952. When you walk through the halls of Edgewater High School in the present, you can see um, some of the original buildings. There are reminders of the past. That is the original front of the auditorium in front of um, in front of Edgewater. And here's what the auditorium looks like today. Quite a difference. Yeah, huge difference. And Scott Howitt that, is the chief uh, communications officer at Orange County Public Schools. He showed us the power of the half penny sales tax. It's definitely been and upgraded. Projects like the renovations here at Edgewater are what that money pays for. The half penny sales tax when it comes to a, a revenue stream is really the only stream that we have to address those major renovations. But Orange County's tax is set to expire late next year. The district hopes voters will renew it in November. But now is the time for the school board to make sure it makes it on the ballot. Our board will make a decision to move forward based on budget based on data, what they're looking at, the survey was critical for that. We asked OCPS to share the results of their recent facilities survey with us. How it says it tells them what faculty and families would like to see funds from the half penny tax used for. Just reading through some of the top rated results, I mean, you see 
AC is on here. Bathrooms are awful. These strike me as immediate needs that should be fixed. They are, and a lot of these immediate needs are getting fixed. The issue is the fix needs to be a long term, right? So you want to invest back in your facilities. Our new six investigators found out more than $890 million worth of maintenance projects in Orange County could go unfunded. I noticed some paint peeling. And they're not the only district. Marion County's school superintendent called it a crisis. Do you think you've really reached a crisis point? I think we have, and, it, and it's not being overly dramatic. They also want voters to decide in November. People wonder, well, why can't you have money from somewhere else? Over the course of time, we've been really constrained as to the amount of money that we're getting from the state. This is our main source of revenue for addressing those capital needs long term, and so it helps us to really plan and to see where, where we're going to go. Orange County says they now know what the priorities are as the school board makes decisions in May. May 7th is a, is a key day. They'll be discussing their budget capital priorities for the next year and for the next 10 years. What could impact the state of our schools for years to come? What happens if voters don't want to renew this tax? I don't even want to really think about that because if that were to happen, we could go back to some of those pictures that we saw from Edgewater. In Orange County, Catherine Silver, Getting Results, News 6. I mean, I, I, you feel, because we remember the reporting that especially Eric Sandoval did about how some of the schools didn't have AC in the gymnasium. Right. Yeah. How can you function like that or even learn like that? And as, all, as we all are, we're taxpayers, right? We like to see where our tax dollars are going. Yeah. And when we're improving schools, I say that is a good source of our tax revenue. So 100%. we'll see what happens. And we want to know what you think with the county schools needing the most help in getting results for our students. Okay, so tonight's News 6 at 6.30 question of the day. What is your biggest concern at your child's school? Weigh in at clickorlando.com right now, uh, slash react right now. Choose from outdated facilities, overcrowding, security and technology access, or maybe you have no concerns. A few dozen people have already weighed in. Again, make your voice heard at clickorlando.com slash react. Also, security costs money as well. And again, that's, true. that's that's one of those things where you know your your tax dollars are going to work. And if you have your phone handy, just open up your camera app, scan the QR code you see on your screen, and the link will take you to the poll. We'll have the results tomorrow night right here at 6:30. Six squatters are now facing charges for selling drugs out of a vacant home. It was happening at a home in Holly Hill late last month. The governor passed a new law making it easier for deputies to remove squatters from homes. Yeah, usually it's a process to remove them, but that will soon change in July. News Six's Molly Reed shows us how deputies spent some time building their case. This is the house here where those six people were arrested last night, but when deputies got here, they say 12 people were inside. Some of those who weren't arrested are still here because they aren't facing charges. Now, looking at the house, you might be able to see a few things are boarded up. The windows are missing, and if you look closely at that electricity box, you'll notice the meter is missing. That's because this house is supposed to be vacant or was vacant until these squatters turn it into their headquarters. The city says it's been the center of complaints for months. These people just really didn't care. They had absolute impunity that nothing was ever going to happen to them. This body camera video shows all 12 people who were in the house. I blurred it since some currently aren't facing charges. Six of them though were found with dozens of grams of narcotics and guns. We had complaints from the trash and debris outside. At one point they were running a, a uh, electrical line across the street. Now I asked the sheriff and the mayor if the newly passed law here in Florida about squatters would help them in this case. It's supposed to make it easier to criminally charge squatters. They say they're missing one key component for that to work, an owner. The homeowner passed away. The person who the house went to passed away. So it's so it's hard to determine how do you determine trespass. Our city attorney is in talks with the foreclosure attorney for the bank and they're filing uh, next week to actually have a, a motion for eject, ejectment of this house. Then if the bank signs off on it, they'll be able to criminally trespass anybody who goes back into that house. A sheriff hopes he can have deputies knocking on the door sometime within the next week. In Holly Hill, Volusia County, I'm Molly Reed getting results, News 6.
Well, tonight we are back in the studio after hitting the road to downtown Sanford yesterday covering the 32771 zip code. While we are not in that community today, we'll still be keeping tabs on what's important there and bring you those stories. Affordable housing is one of the biggest worries for folks in 32771. And today, New 6 was there as leaders cut the ribbon on phase two of Monroe Landings, adding 80 new affordable units to the community. I got an inside look at those units earlier this week. The complex has a total of 144, all dedicated to low-income renters. That's defined as someone who makes no more than 60% of the area's median income. It includes a number of community amenities as well, including two playgrounds and a pool to make it a good place to call home. It's important that we have amenities. I mean, you know, it's, it's great to have the housing, this beautiful housing, but things like that are important because it's about building community. We're building housing, but we're also building communities. The entire complex expected to be occupied in the next month. And we do want to say thank you to so many people who came out and showed their support yesterday. It was so great to meet so many people. We're still talking about it we today. Are. We had we such are. a great time. It was yeah, lovely. lasting impact. Oh on my us. gosh, <laughs> yeah, for sure. As we continue to cover the 32771 zip code, we're also looking ahead now to Montbird and the 34756 zip code. That's where we're heading. And that's going to take the road some time. Next. Yeah, <laughs> get used to that. That's a doesn't roll right out uh -uh. off the tongue there. We want to hear from those of you living in that area. Tell us what makes your community special. What are the challenges and how we can help you get results? Head to clickorlando.com slash hits the road, or you can take out your phone right now, open up your camera, scan the QR code on your screen. It'll take you right to the hits the road section of clickorlando.com. Tell us your concerns, the successes, and of course, we always love knowing about those hidden gems. Whether you knew him as a football great, a movie and TV actor, or a man acquitted of murder, O.J. Simpson is one of the top stories trending tonight on ClickOrlando.com. Loved ones say that Simpson passed away yesterday at the age of 76. They made that announcement on the site formerly known as Twitter, saying in, par in part, Orenthal James Simpson succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren during this time of transition. His family asked that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. That post has now been seen and shared more than 18 million times. Known as the Juice, Simpson won the Heisman Trophy at USC before an 11-season NFL career with the Buffalo Bills and San Francisco 49ers. After retiring, he launched a successful career as a sports broadcaster, film star, and ad pitch man. But in June of 1994, the World Watch Police chased his white Bronco on L.A.'s freeways. His ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ron Goldman, were found stabbed to death. Wimson Simpson was accused of their murders, and his televised hearing was called the trial of the century. The jury found him not guilty, but he was found liable for the murders in a civil trial. Much later, Simpson served nine years in prison for a 2007 Las Vegas robbery. For an in-depth look at his life and career, look for the OJ story on the homepage of ClickOrlando.com. All right, our second top trending story could change the way you fly, or at least the way you start your journey. The headline, <laughs> Delta Airlines changing how passengers board flights. Here's how it will now work. Delta is returning to numbered groups for boarding. That's how they did it before 2019 when they started boarding by category like first class or sky priority. That confused a lot of people, so it is back to boarding groups one through eight. It will appear on your boarding pass. That change starts next month. You'll find full details on clickorlando.com. Some people just like to act like they don't understand the boarding process. Well, hey, I think you can get away with it sometimes, yeah, I right? I think you know if you got first class or not. I mean, if I don't have carry-on, I could be the last one on that thing. You don't care. I, don't yeah. care. I mean, it's a yeah. lot better to be in the airport than on that little tube, Correct. right? Our third top trending title may be the story of the day and a real estate opportunity as well. The headline, want to own a deserted island in Florida for $1,000? You just might be able to. All right, so it's called Beer Can Island and it's located offshore in Tampa Bay. Yeah, no surprise, ClickOrlando.com and New 6 Digital producer Anthony Talcott uncovered this tale of a party place changing hands. I used to live over in the Tampa Bay area, so that is a party island. Yeah, that's what it seems like, Ginger. So, right now the current owners built their own little tropical getaway right in Tampa Bay. It's about two miles offshore. 
And after years of serving up drinks at the tiki bars, letting guests try out Beer Can Island's water slide, it was time to move on. <laughs> so one of the owners, Russell Loomis, actually gave us some of these photos of what it looked like before being closed back in February. According to the Tampa Bay Times, the man-made island was created in the 1940s. And it got the name Beer Can Island because long before there were bars, boaters would hop out, party, and leave the empties behind. Mm. Now, Russell and three of his friends bought it in 2017, and he told me that he got the idea for a floating paradise while living in South America. But the long work hours needed to keep the business going, taking its toll, and damage from Hurricane Adalia last year made things a lot worse. So it went on the market in February for about $14 million. Now, here's where the sales pitch comes in. One prospective buyer has found out what he calls Save Beer Can Island, and he says that anyone who pledges $1,000 can own a share of the island if his bid wins. Now, he says that more than 200 people have already signed up for shares of the island. Is that number going to continue to grow? I don't need know. It to grow a lot. They, they're not going to see that money ever again. I'm sorry. What, it, he's <laughs> well, doing, that's the thing. I did check with him. He said that if the bid doesn't go through, anybody who pitched in for this will get all of their money back. Oh, okay. Oh, well, of course, he Still said no uh, If he said it, then that's, that's fine. Done. Well, yeah. I suppose that's a fair point. <laughs> Now, if you'd like to check out the Nine Acre Island for yourself, the real name is Pine Key on Paradise Island. Now, if you live there, you'd have pretty good security. Tampa's McAdill Air Force Base is not too far away on Tampa Bay, and it's also pretty close to Apollo Beach. Now, you can always find all of our top stories on the homepage at clickorlando.com. Ginger, Justin? Yeah, I'm just telling you, I remember <laughs> spring breakers just coming <laughs> to Beer Can Island. Saw, and, but you yeah. also saw it was a wedding venue, too. I, yeah. It looked nice from that, that wedding venue with the yeah, sunset. Yeah, make it look nice. But oh, I mean, I basically, what I learned from that, Anthony, is that it got its name because people would litter. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And from what Loomis had told me, it took him about, what was it, four months in order to get all of that stuff hauled out? Yeah. It was about uh, 500 different garbage bags. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, so it took him a while. Mm -hmm. But yeah. uh, so it turned out pretty well. Let's hope the new owners, uh, you know, are more... Eco-friendly, I guess, or make sure that everyone who goes you there got a thousand bucks laying around. I do Ooh. not. Yeah, not <laughs> this economy. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony, thank you. <laughs> All right, getting results after fender benders. Right now, it can take hours for a trooper to make it out to your crash scene. That's right. Ahead on News Six at six thirty, the new wave virtual troopers will soon be able to clear a crash without leaving the office, and how it could get results. Speaking of troopers, hi, hi. I think he remembers me, at least I hope so. Well, we all remember this story. A few weeks ago, Trooper Steve went on patrol and met a very good boy who needed a good home. Well, Reginald the dog is no longer locked up. How the friendly five-year-old is faring with his new forever family. First though, citizens insurance is slimming down, dropping hundreds of thousands of policies. How to know if your coverage is changing and why it could cost you 20% more. You're watching News 6 at 6.30 live on News 6 Plus. We're getting results in Palm Coast, Lady Lake, and all of Central Florida. We'll be right back. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places.
Welcome back to News 6 at 630. Homeowners, listen up. If you were dropped by your property insurance and turned to Citizens Insurance, you may want to keep an eye on your email. You may have a new insurance company. Yeah, Citizens, of course, is state back and is supposed to be an insurance of last resort. Instead, it became the largest insurer in Florida. Now, Citizens is turning over hundreds of thousands of policies to private companies. News 6 investigator Eric Sandoval found out this may not be good news for customers. Citizens Insurance CEO Tom Serio says getting rid of hundreds of thousands of property insurance policies is a good thing. It's very promising what we're seeing. New capital is coming into Florida. Citizen size is trending downward, which of course reduces our exposure. His comments came on Wednesday during Citizens Board of Governors meeting. We found out the company got rid of more than 275,000 property insurance policies by giving them to other insurance companies. They've unloaded nearly 115,000 policies so far this year. And so far, the companies taking the most of Citizens' policies are Slide Insurance, Homeowner's Choice, SafePoint, and Peninsula. Now, this may sound well for citizens' bottom line, but what does it mean for you, the homeowner? Well, we took that question here to somebody who knows, an insurance agent. If you have an insurance policy with citizens, are you automatically going to be switched to a different company, or do you have a say in whether you leave citizens? Tom Cotton is the president of Hugh Cotton Insurance in Orlando. He says only citizens' customers whose rates would go up less than 20 percent by going to one of these new insurance carriers would be asked to leave. But that could mean a higher insurance bill for them. Do you think a lot of people are going to take the offer? Um, well, if you're in that range where the offer is less than 20 percent more, if you don't take it, citizens will not renew your policy. Got it. So that's when it's almost, you have to take it or leave it. Right. That, that's to get rid of the people that are in citizens simply because of price. Mm -hmm. And do you think there's a lot of those? Oh, I do. Now, there is a little bit of good news to pass along. Cotton says the reinsurance rates, or the insurance rate that insurance companies pay to insure themselves, that is going down. And that means that all homeowners paying property insurance can probably see some relief coming pretty soon. That is if hurricanes and other natural disasters stay away. In Orlando, Eric Sandoval getting results. News 6. Well, it is a plan to get results and get drivers back on the road faster after fender benders. The Central Florida Expressway Authority gave the green light for FHP to use cell phones to respond to minor collisions. It's 2024, right? Desk troopers will soon be making calls to crash scenes without leaving the office. News 6's Mark Lehman shows us how it'll work and why it's so badly needed. It's using... Uh, technology to allow our troopers to work a crash via, via smartphone. Lieutenant Colonel Mark Brown says it's called the FHP desk trooper concept. The idea, he says, comes out of necessity. Florida ranks last in the country with only nine troopers to every 100,000 people, and that can lead to slow response times. The Orlando area, it, it can be anywhere from 30 minutes on a good day to multiple hours on a bad day. The pilot program will provide two remote desk troopers during peak rush hour times. They would send a link to a driver's smartphone. Everyone involved would need to agree to participate, and the crash has to be minor. No injuries. Uh, the vehicles don't need to be towed. There's no commercial motor vehicle involved. There's no criminal violations. So here's how this program works. Once there's consent, a trooper will use a person's camera phone to talk virtually to everyone involved. They'll then use the phone to take a closer look at all of the vehicles, inspecting the damage like we have here from a previous fender bender. The trooper will use that information to write up their report and clear the crash scene within a matter of minutes. By doing this, we can free up someone's day uh, by 30 minutes, an hour, sometimes three hours. You know, I think that's really the goal. All right, so... <laughs> and that's the thing, though, really. I mean, think about that. If you get in a little fender bender and it takes them up to upwards of two, three hours to yeah. get to you and you think... This can all be resolved. It could, it could and it should be resolved, but both parties, as he was saying, they both have to agree. Right. One of you can't be like, hey, this is just minor and yeah. I have, you have no injuries. True. It's like, not that you can see, and then they're already on the phone with an attorney. So you're going to have people with different Yeah, uh, Yeah, no, there's going to probably be some growing pains classifies with that. as yeah. minor, yeah. So we want to know what you think about this new program. We have a poll inside the story on clickorlando.com.
Speaking of troopers, when our own Trooper Steve went on patrol this morning, he caught up with a four-footed friend. You may remember this guy, this handsome guy right here, Reggie. Aww. A few weeks ago, they met at Orange County Animal Services. We want to say for the record, Reggie is a good boy. Yes. The five-year-old German Shepherd was struggling to find his forever home. So Steve's report definitely got results. And just days later, we told you Reggie was adopted by an Orange County deputy and his family. Trooper Steve went to see how they're doing. How are things been so far? Super good. He's, uh, he's starting to adjust well to being in, in a regular home, not in jail. Not in jail, and, yeah. And uh, he's a lover. He loves everybody. He's taking them around, and he definitely loves people, so we're happy about that. You have an experience, though, with, because most people saw this, and they were like, that's got to be a police dog. And I was like, he is gorgeous. He looks like he's ready to work, but your background is a former canine handler. Uh, yes. So it, before I worked in Orange County, I was a different agency and I worked uh, with a canine for about almost five years. Okay. So you kind of know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> five so. years as a working handler, I think you would know. Oh, hi. Hi. I think he remembers me. At least I hope so. Oh my gosh. You can't make this up. I do love Reggie. How oh sweet. Oh my is gosh. He? I think he was thanking Steve. <laughs> Maybe so. Reggie's it's, smiling in this picture. I here. mean, because Reggie's getting along great in his new home. Deputy Pop <laughs> says he loves going to that dog park, and you can follow him on Instagram too. We have that information on clickorlando.com slash on patrol. His Insta's gonna blow up because <laughs> I, I'm going right after this show to follow him. Oh. I'm so happy that it all worked out, mm -hmm. but I feel like Reggie knows that he's got a safe place to call home. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Well, it was raining cats and dogs at one point today. That was too easy. I'm going to pick that low hanging wow. fruit every time. Let's go. <laughs> now, let's go. go. And keep going. Let's go. <laughs> Live with the radar right now. We are good to go. The scattered showers have left us. We had a couple of warnings of really concern. Earlier today, we had a tornado warning for Flagler and a tornado warning for Volusia. No touchdown of that, but there was a tornado on the ground up around St. Augustine for a while. Then we had a severe thunderstorm warning for parts of Bavard County. Since that time, things have improved rapidly here in Central Florida, and we don't have anything to look at right now. Future radar checking out. Not much left, maybe a little spritz of moisture. That'd be about it. Tomorrow's going to be a much, much improved weather situation. On a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being awesome, tomorrow's a 9. Still windy at times, but dry and no more storms, so it's all going to be good. Low this morning was 72, the high today 83. Downtown Orlando right now 77 degrees on the light Orlando delivering Hope camera. It is beautiful. Launch Credit Union camera in Bavard County, we're holding at 74. And the temperature reading where you live, 76 Daytona Beach, 74 Ocala, 72 in Gainesville, 74 Claremont. You get the picture. We are all close. We're all in the 70s and we're all under the same air mass now. The wind is uniform, moving in here from the west southwest at 22 in Sanford, 11 in Leesburg, a 16 mile per hour wind in Orlando, and a 21 mile per hour wind. Those are not gust, those are the real deal winds. Here comes our cold front pushing in from the west. Trothiness beginning to get on out of here now. See the rain leaving us quickly. That is all good news. By the time you wake up tomorrow, the front is all the way into the Bahamas. And through the day tomorrow, through the day on Saturday, high pressure remains in control. By Sunday into Monday, it moves to the east, and when it does, it becomes a huge heat pump. Tonight, the clouds linger, but the wind moves in. Drier air starts to show up for us tomorrow. So we'll have a lot of sunshine tomorrow. Dry air gobbles up the cloud cover. Lows tonight, 50s and 60s all over. We'll call the official low in Orlando, 61. Here is tomorrow. Your forecast is sponsored by Florida Lottery. 73 by lunchtime tomorrow. That daytime high is 80. Come look at the week ahead. 80 tomorrow, 81 Saturday, 83 Sunday. Then one week from today, look at that high. We're going back to 90. All right, looking okay. Thank you, Tom. Well, they were living off coconuts, making a help sign in the sand with big leaves. Yeah, this sounds like a plot sure from, does. say, Gilligan's Island or a movie like Castaway, but this was real. How the, these creative castaways got results and made their own rescue possible when News 6 at 6.30 continues in just two minutes.
All right, so this sounds like something out of a movie or a real life Gilligan's Island. <laughs> Three castaways stranded on a remote island for more than a week use palm leaves to find help. It works. Their creativity got results and may have saved their lives too after a U.S. Navy jet spotted their sign in the sand on the beach. <laughs> That's crazy. Good writing as well. The three had planned to go fishing in the area, which is part of Micronesia. That's in the northwestern Pacific Ocean. It's east of the Philippines and includes several U.S. territories, including Guam. Their 20-foot open skiff was caught by swells, damaging the motor. So they managed to get to shore, but they had no radio. The Coast Guard said they lived off coconut meat and fresh water from a small well on the island, which is sometimes visited by fishermen in the region. The Coast Guard said they had searched some 78,000 square nautical miles for those missing mariners. They called their help sign a crucial factor in their discovery. I think that well also kept them alive. Oh, correct. All three are doing just fine. You hear hmm. stories like that and it's just unbelievable, but it, it worked. And if you've ever seen anything about a Coast Guard search and looking in that much water, is like trying to literally find a drop of water in all that water. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly hard. So, yeah, the well keeping them alive, a huge factor, but to have that help sign, game also, changer. Also, yeah, good penmanship and spelling. That's right. <laughs> also helpful. Hey, yeah. thank you for watching News 6 at 6.30. Stream News 6 online anytime on our News 6 Plus smart TV app. Break news on clickorlando.com. See you again at 11. Take care.